No fap founder is suing neuroscientist who thinks masturbating is fine. Or so I read in Vice this week. How fun, how appropriate. It's about sex, it's about science, it's about pseudoscience. And this is hashtag no nut November. So I could not wait to make this video. Uh, I was wrong and stupid. Making this video nearly broke me. NoFap was started and trademarked a few years back by Alexander Rhodes, uh, who now runs NoFap.com and also helps oversee a very popular subreddit, all of which are critical of the porn industry. And they try to encourage people, mostly men, to stop masturbating to pornography and to stop masturbating in general uh, in order to receive a number of benefits. What those benefits are vary from person to person and belief system to belief system, but generally they claim that you can strengthen your own relationships, you can have better control over your own life in general, uh, and you can have more energy for doing things other than masturbating. <laughs> uh, the NoFab website also makes it clear that they believe that porn addiction is real and that it can be very damaging to people who have it. Nicole Prouse is a neuroscientist who has researched pornography and found that there is most likely no such thing as porn addiction. Uh, you can form a bad habit of watching porn and that habit can spiral out of control, but it's not like a physiological addiction in the way that we say that someone might be addicted to tobacco, for instance. The general scientific consensus is with Prouse. Uh, NoFap.com claims to be science-based, but they simply aren't when it comes to this. And their website is completely awash in evo-psych pseudoscience, like explaining how porn is at odds with the primitive environment that our brains evolved in. Prouse clearly has a scientific bone to pick so to speak, uh, with Rhodes. And so when I saw the Vice article proclaiming that Rhodes was now suing Prowse for libel, I immediately heard alarm bells. I've made many videos about the chilling effect of libel laws and how pseudoscientists often use them to silence their scientific criticism. Uh, the Vice article points that out, along with describing how NoFap is misogynistic, racist, anti-Semitic, full of harassers who doggedly attack critics. It all made a lot of sense to me. It sounds familiar. Uh, but there was one thing missing from the Vice article. They didn't discuss what the actual supposed basis for the lawsuit was. No quotes from the lawsuit claiming, for instance, that Prouse had libeled Rhodes and NoFap by claiming that there's uh, that they're wrong about porn addiction. So I went looking for the court documents and what I found was a big old can of worms. First of all, I found the website yourbrainonporn.com, uh, made and maintained by Gary Wilson, who is the author of a book by the same name. Wilson has collected several textbooks worth of information about Nicole Prouse. I mean, regardless of what Prouse has done to this guy, it's an obsessive amount of links and screenshots and screeds. I'll be honest, it immediately creeped me out and added more credence to Prouse's position that no FAP and or the people affiliated with them are a bunch of stalkers. Uh, but I found the court documents there that Rhodes had filed and I looked through them. Rhodes isn't suing Prouse because she says that pornography is an addictive, uh, at least on the surface. Uh, he is suing her because, according to Rhodes, Prouse repeatedly over the past three years falsely claimed that he was stalking her, harassing her, violating restraining orders, uh, saying that he's a misogynist and saying that he promotes neo-Nazi groups like the Proud Boys. And here's the thing, Rhodes includes screenshots of all of this, and it kind of looks like he's telling the truth. 
he okay let's let's just start with the proud boys thing for instance Rhodes presents uh tons of screenshots of Prowse telling the world constantly that Rhodes promotes and works with the proud boys this is all over twitter and other social media the truth is clearly to me that back in April of 2016, Rhodes went on Proud Boys founder Gavin McInnes's show in order to promote NoFap. Rhodes points out that back then, McInnes was simply known as the founder of Vice, who had a popular streaming show at the time. And yes, that's right. We're talking about Vice, the publisher of the article I read that was bashing Rhodes. Uh, that's because... Back then, um, in early 2016, McGinnis hadn't even started Proud Boys yet. He wouldn't start Proud Boys for another five months. Rhodes says that he would never interact with McGinnis now that he and the rest of the world knows that McGinnis is a neo-Nazi. And that appears to be true. He hasn't been on the show since, and he certainly not doesn't appear to be friends with them. The rest of Prowse's claims are a lot like that. They're misunderstandings of the facts that either deliberately or not, they paint Rhodes to look terrible. She quotes some jerk on Twitter who has no fap in his username and claims that this is no fap attacking her. But Rhodes replies to her on Twitter and says that they don't like that guy either and that they've already served him with a cease and desist. She ignores his reply and then changes the subject to talk about a random person who blogged that she should get fucked. And then she talks about a, a post on the NoFap forum where a random user calls someone a professor when that person doesn't have a degree. Her tweets were, I mean, to put it in a scientific context, completely batshit. I do sympathize because I'm sure that NoFap attracts its fair share of misogynists. The subreddit is especially at risk because of how easily incels and other misogynists propagate on Reddit. Uh, and this is a forum about masturbations, about sex. It's going to attract those types. Uh, but just for fun, I decided to check out the forums on NoFap.com and it was as far as I could tell, completely clear of sexism. Uh, I even looked in the lonely incel section and all I found were some dudes who were genuinely sad about not being confident enough to ask girls out on dates. None of them were blaming women. They were all talking about how hard they were finding it to improve themselves in the face of their problems like depression. So, you know, it was like actual real incel shit, but without the misogyny. Um, in fact, over on Twitter, I noticed this tweet in one of the replies to the official NoFap account's description of this lawsuit. Uh, I was banned from your website for saying that Jews own the pornography industry. Now they're attacking you guys, calling you hateful, anti-Semitic, deceitful, sexist, etc. in full force. Sweet fucking karma, you should have listened. Prowse claims that the official NoFap position is that of anti-Semites, but here we have a stupid piece of shit anti-Semite quite proudly saying, like, nope, they banned me. Does that mean that I think Rhodes should be suing her for libel? I'm not a lawyer, and I tend to think that libel lawsuits should only happen in the most egregious circumstances when there are real damages at stake. Uh, but I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I had fantasies about suing some of my harassers for libel. Like, if I had the extra money laying around and the extra energy to do it, who's to say? And does all this mean that I think that Prowse is wrong about the addictive nature of porn or that Rhodes is right about its non-addictive properties? Absolutely not. Uh, let me make this very clear. The scientific consensus is that pornography is not addictive, uh, nor is it necessarily bad for society in general. Um, masturbation is not bad for you either and in fact it can be really good for you it can keep you relaxed it can relieve anxiety in fact several studies have suggested that regular ejaculation whether through masturbation sex or wet dreams 
might reduce your risk of testicular cancer. Most, if not all of the benefits people claim that they get from not masturbating are pure fantasy and pseudoscience. I may not have found misogyny or anti-Semitism on the NoFap forum, but I did find some some real howlers. Uh, like this poor guy who thinks that not ejaculating helps his body absorb sperm that will turn into stem cells and repair his body like he's Wolverine. There's an entire subforum dedicated to talking about sexual transmutation, the idea that you can take whatever energy you aren't spending on sex or masturbation and instead directly convert it into life success. Uh, I hear that's actually how Isaac Newton managed to come up with the idea of gravity. It was all thanks to not fucking. So no, this the entire idea is pretty stupid. Um, but some people like it, and that's fine. What's not fine is when it turns into a cult. And when you read the NoFap subreddit, it does start to sound like it is kind of a cult. I wouldn't be surprised if some assholes who identify with NoFap and frequent these forums and buy into the idea that this is some life-changing philosophy that the porn industry is trying to hide would turn around and harass scientists who point out inconvenient facts, like that porn isn't actually a physiological addiction. But in this case, I don't know, it really does look like the guy who runs nofap.com and who trademarked the name is keeping his house fairly clean and disavowing people who pull stupid shit like that. The core philosophy of NoFap doesn't appear to be misogynistic or anti-Semitic in the least. Uh, the fact that misogynists and anti-Semites have gravitated toward it and historically have embraced not masturbating as a philosophy doesn't seem to be Rhodes's fault. If it's anyone's fault that a bunch of neo-Nazis are identifying with NoFap, it's Gavin McGinnis, who adopted that philosophy and then spread it to the Proud Boy movement that he later kickstarted. So yeah, I know this video is probably going to surprise some people because maybe for the first time ever, a pseudoscientist is suing a scientist for libel, and I can't say that I'm 100% on the side of the scientist.